just give you a close look. So the next job here is all these spot welds that you really can't see. So usually what I like to do is get a you know, pry bar and kind of hammer it. Just kind of a little bit of wiggle, you know, lift it up a little bit, bend it up. Eventually you can see in here somewhere the spot well is. So then I'll get on the front edge and start picking it up. And now I can tell you, this works as a really good tool. It kind of goes like this. And it kind of usually starts hitting right over top of it. Let's see, you could almost see an impression of the circle right there. But that's where the spot well is. That's what I do to find these when you really can't see them. So now I'll drill a pilot hole and then drill it out. All right, so drill my pilot hole and drill through the spot well. And now I just take this. Sometimes they might hang on a minute, so you gotta kind of get in there and just give it a whack. But this one, perfect. And you can see most of this is already broken off and rusted away. So then there's usually you know, two or three here on the edge. They put them real close. Sometimes there's only two. But now I just kind of start working this front edge. Just Harbor Freight five dollar, six dollar spot weld cutters. They do the job if you do it like that. I know I for sure got one of them. This one might, might be hanging on by much, but it's still there. Alright, so a little bit of progress. And let's just took out these corner pieces here. Um, in this case, this repair is going to be fixed with square tubing. And what you know what have we always done here was we usually just cut this bas back cross member right there at the seam. So you're left with this. And then that square tube just comes and sits right up against here. You can spot weld it in place and it's perfect. It doesn't even, uh, you know, it doesn't affect the bed line, body line. Of course, if you have the correct tube. But anyways, so tip here is this. You can see I've only been working on this for maybe like 10 minutes. This can get really messy. All these, I call them rust flakes. <laughs> it's your new cereal. But uh, <laughs> so 
my advice to you is, you know, keep cleaning up as you go. Otherwise, this gets out of hand and it's ridiculous. So I usually try to keep like a scrap bucket. Take these pieces and you know, get rid of them as they come off. And then I got my shop back over there. So, you know, once it starts getting like this, I'll go through and vacuum. Because as you work, this stuff kicks up in your face. And even if you have safety glasses on, like I do right now, that you're still going to get, you know, dust and stuff flying in the air. And it, for me, it really bothers my eyes because I got contacts. So it's not really an easy fix. It's a good way to just ruin your contacts, which I've done many times. So, yeah. Keep it clean and tidy and you'll be good. And now we just continue along getting rid of all these spot welds, cutting that cross member off, and just keep picking away. Doing this process by myself like I used to it probably took me around two hours just hammering it out. But you can see I got my buddy here helping me. So this, I think this probably took us nah, just about an hour. Those are all cleaned off. We gotta look at this area. This is a little soft. Probably close this up a little bit more. It's actually good metal, it's just got kind of ripped out when everything went bad. Okay, here's our other update. So we've got a square tube, got these little squares, got all the, all the holes marked. So we're, I'm gonna cut those holes out for bolts to go through. I do a little bit of repair work in the corner. Um, limited supply of metal, so I <laughs> to make little patches. And then did up here, cause this was pretty much just just this little edge was a little crunchy. And then this bolt hole was mangled. This is what was left. So just gonna throw that in there. And then we got two more right there. And then that's it. The rest of the floor is good. And then we'll be ready to, yeah, I got this cross member in. We'll be ready to weld it in here soon. I just got to finish getting these in. And then that's it. So, moving along. Moving along. So I got these things welded in. I, um, yeah, they're just kind of stitched in pretty much because it's really all you need. And then after that, just, you know, make sure you paint all the bare metal surfaces. And then I like to throw in fluid film in particular, just because it creeps between the two panels and it usually is good enough. But anyways, so we're moving on to this cross member. We'll get ready to put this one in. I was trying to see if I would be able to cut or drill with my step bit, but um, yep, it uh, pretty much was at the end of its life. So I only got maybe a three quarter inch hole. I like these to be bigger just because doing the square tube stuff like this it usually does go really well but for that like one or two times that it's happened sometimes you just need to bed to like shift this way shift this way and just gives you you know if you have like an eighth inch in either direction it gives you enough room to get the bolts threaded in and then everything will sit right so the next thing i'm going to do this is i got these all marked out so i'm going to cut them out because i have it the plasma cutter Otherwise, yes, I would be drilling holes in all of these. And uh, I've done it. 
you know multiple times before but now i got this so it makes it a lot easier so now i'm going to get ready to cut all this stuff out cross members are all welded in so that's what it looks like still going to vacuum some of the stuff and you know throw a paint on all these uh welds and bare metal areas and once that's dry you know we'll be good to go and these here i usually just use uh i got self tappers i usually just use for this here so nothing too fancy Is that detailed enough? Hmm. So, I'll do a quick video explaining, you know, what I do here to protect the work that's done. So, first, probably wondering why it's all miscolored, you know. So, this here, this is the factory, you know, whatever you want to call it, paint. That's not really, I mean, it's paint, but whatever they used on the bottom of these things. So basically all I do is take a wire wheel and go across the bottom, any areas that are bubbling. So that'll reveal the rust and clean the rust up with the wire wheel. And then from there, you know, just top coat it with anything. You can put rust treatment on it if you like, if you have it, but really anything will work. You just got to prep the surface correctly. So that's, that was already done with the wire wheel. And then after that, you know, just some black spray paint, simple as that, you know, put a couple coats on everything and then, uh, you know, top coat, it was clear that would seal it up a lot better. And then I'll let that all dry and then follow it up with this stuff, which is an oil based undercoat, soft coat doesn't harden at all comes out like a sprayable grease almost it's very thick does a great job of protecting everything and it lasts a while too i know i put it on the square body over there about three years ago and mm, probably at the point now i gotta redo it at least in some spots it's not completely off but this stuff lasts a lot longer than fluid film. It's just thicker, it just adheres better. And because it's oil-based, it actually soaks into the metal. So even if you don't top coat it necessarily with paint, it will go right into the rusted metal and soak up into it. And then, you know, it protects it from uh, oxidation and additional moisture. But just like anything else, once this is done, you gotta keep up with it. You know, I'd probably, I would check on it probably once a year just to see if there's some areas to touch up on, especially in the bed here, the wheel wells, you know, they're gonna take a lot of abuse. Even back here, if you don't have mud flaps, this truck does, but still back here usually gets hit real hard. And it's hard to keep up with it because there's a spare tire here generally. So, but it's just things you gotta think about, especially if you live up here in the rust belt. But a lot of people don't, and they just want to drive these things until they fall apart. 
So, yeah. All right, so this is just picking up the bed. It is pretty much as easy as it looks, especially with the engine lift. No big deal. Just take your time, and it goes on pretty smoothly. I mean, an extra set of eyes always helps too, but, and then after that, just hand tighten all these bolts in. Highly recommended because the quality of these bolts are hit and miss sometimes. But hand tighten them and you should be fine and good to go and not have any problems.